Right, Sue Ronan, good morning to you. How are you? How is it going, lads? All good? Yeah, pretty good. Um, we were talking about the, the switch from... Um, so all the back pages today are talking about Vera Pau and how difficult it was for her to make the decision but uh, the back pages aren't aware of the fact that last night in the mansion house the team gathered Vera was there all the friends and family were there and they had an incredible night where they reflected on the journey that they've been but also there was just this palpable sense of excitement and expectation so sport is really cruel for the people who are going to be left behind but for the people who are on the plane this is the moment of a lifetime and that's really where their focus needs to be now no, absolutely. And I mean, look, my first reaction, the first thing I want to say is I want to congratulate all those that have made the squad. Um, it's a fantastic achievement. You know, they're on the world stage now for the first time at a, at a major finals. Matches are going to be beamed into every living room worldwide. Like There'll be billions watching this tournament. Um, and if they do well, it could change their lives, you know. But of course, we want to remember those that have missed out, uh, commiserate with them. It, it is a tough time for them. They're going to need a lot of support uh, in the coming days from those close to them. Um, but, you know, I, I think we do have to focus on those that have actually made the squad now. Now. And looking at the squad, I mean, like it is a strong squad. Uh, it's well balanced. Um, there's probably a nucleus of players that have been there for a long, long time that probably picked picked itself, picked themselves. Uh, we've got some real quality in the squad, and I've said it before. We world class players in O'Sullivan and Katie McKay. I mean, they're just super players. Um, but there's a real mix there as well of experience of youth. Uh, you have versatile players who can play in different positions and that's really important in a tournament scenario um, and apart I suppose from one or two new faces it, it has been pretty settled in the last year or two um, so I'm still confident that we'll do well in, in our group I really am um, I, There's a couple of things I, I want to talk about before we get into the, the nitty gritty of the squad uh, in the middle of so uh, Vera and Katie McCabe were the first guests on last night and in the middle of it um Vera made one of her analysts or, or backroom team stand up and, and pointed out the incredible work that they'd done. And then she told a story about when Scotland played Austria in the qualifiers. Uh, it was the, the playoff situation. We knew we were going to play one or the other. And she asked for three scouts to be sent to the game. And, you know, normally you send one scout to a game. And she had asked for three, which is obviously a request for resources. And there was no question. It was 100% straight away. This is Vera's story. And then uh, the three scouts went to the match and worked through the night so at nine o'clock the next morning all of the technical analysis had been done. Um, the, the start of this story was actually Katie McCabe saying that she was looking over uh, Courtney Brosnan's shoulder on the bus on the way to Hampden Park and Brosnan was looking at penalties and specifically the uh, positioning of where the penalties would be taken and McCabe was like, oh, she's on it tonight. And then lo and behold, Brosnan saves a penalty in the first half and McCabe in the run-up goes, she's going to save this, I know, because I've, I've been watching it. And, but apparently all that work had started in the immediate aftermath of the Scotland-Austria game where the three scouts had stayed up, worked through the night and provided the information for the team the next morning who were then ready to go. And I just thought, like, is this is chalk and cheese between the level of preparation that went in in Saipan when the men's team were last in the World Cup and the distance that we've travelled and sometimes you know we can still get stuck with the ah oh, the FAI blah blah but actually th there was a troop of people who came in with the management team last night and it was as big a backroom team as you're going to see in, in any professional sports environment and it just felt like they're being given every chance and so we should pay proper testimony to the FAI and to Vera for driving those standards and for everybody who's involved yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, we've spoken about it here before. I mean, the team have everything they need to have around them now. Uh, unfortunately, they had to make a huge stand years ago, we all know, um, to really get those resources. Um, and, and things have definitely pushed on and moved on since then. I mean, we, they have their standalone uh, um, sponsors now. And uh, you've probably all seen the incredible videos that have already be, um, been put out by Sky about the, the, the squad announcement and just in terms of, you know, little girls watching them. But they have everything they need. And, and you know, no, Vera wanted three um, scouts at that match. She got it and they did their job and they were, I'm sure they were up all night dissecting every piece of, of the Scots and the Austrians, of course, at the times. We didn't know who we were going to be playing. And then every player would have been fully prepared going into that game and knowing exactly what they needed to do, knowing exactly what their opponent or their likely opponent was going to do. And that's the level we're at now. And that is elite sport. And if you want to do well, if teams want to do well, you must have those resources around them. Um, I mean, Vera mentioned yesterday... Uh, 
uh, looking at stats in terms of, I know we'll talk about selections in a minute, but that was one of the, the, the areas she, she helped the, her and, and her staff in terms of looking at Leanne Kiernan. And they have all the sports scientists uh, around them now. They've they've the best medical staff. They, they, they want for nothing really, you know. So all they need to do, I guess now, from the player's point of view is go out on the pitch and perform to the best of their ability and the staff have to prepare them to do that. So it's great to see. I know your name as well, so you got to mention last night along with the other previous um, national team managers. Like, it, it, it must be nice. You must feel a part of this in 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 some strange way as well, because everything that's come before uh, has been so important to getting us to 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 where this team is at now. No, absolutely. And look, you know, it even goes back further than me. Um, you know, there was managers way before my time and managers that I played under and, and indeed volunteers. And I think the volunteers sometimes are overlooked. You know, there's a huge volunteer culture in women's football back in the day when the FAI didn't want to know um, and didn't put any money, didn't even look after the national teams. I mean, volunteers literally put their put hands in their, or pocket, their, their hand in their own pocket or, you know, held fundraising events to actually literally put international teams out. And and I remember in my very first game we went to Sweden and the coach at the time was Fran Rooney actually he could only bring 13 players because of resources so he chose not to bring a second goalkeeper Oh, and, and again, I know that's a, another thing we probably discuss now uh, because it's light years away from that now. But he wanted to have two outfield players on the subs bench. And of course, what happens? Murphy's Law in the first five, ten minutes of the game, the goalkeeper gets injured and an outfield player had to go in. But, you know, that's what happened back in those days. That's what we were up against. And there was a lot of people that were breaking down barriers over the years. And unfortunately, you know, under the old regime and the FBI, we're getting nowhere. But things thankfully have changed and they've gone in the right direction now. It's such a transformative moment, like for Irish sport, and because uh, again, a really excellent point Nathan made. Uh, Pre-COVID, there was a twenty by twenty event, and uh, it was he said there was fifteen or twenty of our best female athletes were were there, and everybody was pointing at Sonia, who I think was there, and was saying that she was the the kind of main icon in their. Uh, life as a, a child growing up and he was making the point that now like there are heroes in Gaelic football there are heroes in rowing there are heroes in boxing there are heroes in but the football team like we know how important football is in galvanising the whole country and we're about to have a tournament so it's such a transformation and it has I think that I'm not sure we fully understand that like we're in the midst of that transformation and it's still got a bit to go yeah, no, absolutely. And I, again, I saw on social media, media the other day scenes that were reminded me of uh, Italia 90 or, or Euro 88 when Ireland qualified for the first major tournament. You had send offs, parties down in um, Denise O'Sullivan's street. They were outside our house singing, there was pipes playing, there was bunting everywhere. And you're going to see that all around the country. And, you know, it's really exciting. And I think, you know, yes, there was disappointment the last couple of days. Players missed out, of course. There was and that'll be there for a while and we'll all talk about it and dissect it but I think the squad now is there they're, they're picked they're settled and you know it's just going to be fantastic the send off when they're down there just the, the word coming back from the camp you know from, from the different media outlets it's just going to bring us all together I think it galvanises and hopefully in terms of women's football it really pushes it on in this country and I absolutely think it, it, it can be the catalyst for greater growth than we've even seen what was the biggest surprise in yesterday's squad announcement for you, Sue? I think uh, probably the same as everybody. Um, I think Jamie Finn, both actually, Jamie and, and Leanne, uh, they were the biggest surprise for me uh, being left out. Um, I suppose... Leanne was coming back from injury um, and I'll talk about her in a second. J Jamie was fully fit from what I, I, I gather. Um, she's had a great season with Birmingham. She's a very versatile player in my view. Um, she's been involved right through the campaign. As we said, she started early, you know, like the big game against Sweden where we drew nil all away and she she played against Scotland also. Um, I think she was only left out of one or two games for yellow card reasons during the campaign, you know, so she's a vital cog um, and I think Vera even commented uh, only last year how important she was to the team against strong opposition because of what she does. And if you remember back to the, the two friendlies against Australia and Denmark, particularly against Denmark, she was a really vital player in the midfield screening that ball, not getting through to the, da the Danish uh, um, 
the Danish top player, Pernilla Harder, who's their number 10 as such. And she just had a great game that day. She could have even been man of the match. So for her not to feature um, was a real disappointment. Was a surprise, sorry. It was a real disappointment, I'm sure, for her, of course, and family, etc. But from my point of view, very surprised that she didn't make it. Um, yeah, Leanne then was the other one. Like for me, Leanne is a net no goal scorer, I think. She offers something different maybe than than what we have. She's scored goals at every level she's played. Um, at underage level, she's she scored a lot of goals for Liverpool in the championship. I know she's had a, 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 a bad injury this year, you know, but I think she's done a lot to get herself. From what I hear, she's worked really hard to get back fit. I know she hasn't played much football, but Unfortunately, that first half, I suppose, against Zambia didn't do her any favours. In general, the team were poor. Um, she had a few heavy touches herself. But for me, with three weeks to go to that Austria game, she, you know, for to get her back to fitness, I would have personally had her in the squad because I just think she offers us something different off the bench. But look, at the end of the day, as we said before, coaches see different things. They're working with the players every day. So we have to go with what the coach uh, has picked. I know Jimmy Finn, of course, made the standby list. Uh, that, that word you used, Sue, about Jimmy Finn, versatility, that, I think that's what surprised most people because I guess at a World Cup, you never know who's going to get injured. Maybe having a player who can play a number of multitude of different positions, as Jimmy Finn has clearly demonstrated she can do, um, that seems to be the real reason why it's such a surprise because those are the players you need at tournaments. No, absolutely. And Jamie can. She can play as a holding midfielder. Um, as we mentioned, she played that in that position in a couple of games. She can also play fullback um, and wing back as well. Like she, 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 I'm sure she, she. I'm not sure I've seen her play wing back. I've definitely seen her play fullback. But you know, she's a very fit girl. She, I think she's a per, She was a personal trainer um, before she went full time uh, in England. So she's very, very fit. Um, yeah, she, she's very good at holding the ball. She's very good at pass. And it's just a huge disappointment for her and a big surprise. But again, it's testament to her and her character. She came out with a beautiful tweet last night. You know, she was still, her, her, her ambition, of course, is to get back in the team. She's It is a little consolation to her. It's a bit of a consolation, I guess, that she's in that travelling reserve. And look, you never know what's going to happen with two matches to come, a couple of weeks of training. She could, might still uh, squeeze in. You don't want to wish anyone, of course, uh, you know, bad or uh, an injury on anybody, but there is that potential for her. She's still on the plane, I guess. But when you look at Leanne, unfortunately, her 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 um, dreams have been crushed for now. So, look, elite sport, unfortunately, that's the nature of it. Um, the, the, the coach and, and the, her, her staff I've no doubt they sat down and Vera said it herself they sat down for many hours night and day probably sleepless nights I'm sure they well, they all put their cards on the table they all made valid points you know all the backroom staff it would all have been dissected they would have looked at okay who's our starting 11 if everyone's fit who's our next best players in the different positions then who can we move around maybe who's fit all those things come into it and um, unfortunately uh, for, for Leanne she's lost out uh, and yeah Jamie has a half a chance I guess but yeah they both lost out in the squad so they were probably the two big surprises for me um, the fact that the game is a sellout 80,000 that it's the opening fixture against the host nations like look this might go badly for us there's a there's a range of outcomes here from uh, three famous one-all draws that get us through somehow uh, to two one-all draws and a victory uh, to you know it, it could be Euro 2012 where we're uh, singing songs and everyone's like why, why are we singing in celebration and it's a funeral song but look at the same time we're in this sweet spot now where actually you know what we've got some world-class players and something magical might happen yeah, no, absolutely. I said it earlier, we do have world-class players. And I mean, we need to start believing that if we don't already, or those who, who maybe don't see it, we do have world-class players. Um, and, you know, we have players that are really, really good that you might necessarily say world-class players, but they're excellent players as well. And we players are playing at the top level in England. We've players now with huge experience. I'm delighted to see Nia Fahi back in the squad. I have to say I'm delighted she's fit. I think she adds a huge amount, uh, not only in terms of versatility, but, you know, she's such a good player 
there. She's such a great reader of the game. She's so much experience. She'd be great, a great leader around the squad also. But I firmly believe we'll come out of that group. I really, really do. Um, I've already bought tickets for uh, the knockout games, but um, I, I firmly believe we'll come out of that group. You know, we've avoided the really, really t- tough top teams, maybe top five or six in the world where it's difficult to get a result. I mean, you look at the two games against USA. We played brilliantly in those two games, but unfortunately we lost. They found a way to win. England are similar. Germany are similar. Spain are similar. France, you know, after that, maybe Japan probably also. But after that, like, you know, we have top teams in the group, but they're definitely not unbeatable. And, and I can see us coming out of the group. I really can. Well, that, that would certainly get the bandwagon rolling too. That's that's exactly what we need. We love we do love an L bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely do yeah no for sure I think look it's time now you know unfortunately there is disappointment there but we need to get behind the squad we need to start galvanising and, and you know celebrate them uh, because they're going to do us proud in, in, in Australia I'm certainly looking forward to the tournament one, one last thing um, nobody's thinking about the Euros and Euro qualification but the age profile of the squad with the exception of the few elder states people that you've um, you've mentioned is, is actually pretty good like there's this team is going to be around the profile is going to grow. This is a very sweet spot for them. Absolutely, yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, the group we got, unfortunately, we're not in the, the A group of the Nations League, you know. Um, so, like, the, the, the group we got, uh, you know, I can't see us not winning any of those games. I'll be totally honest, you, honest with you. So, yeah, and the experience the players are going to have from the World Cup, hopefully from a World Cup where they've done really well, they're going to come back. They're, they're going to be raring to go against uh, Hungary, Albania and, and Northern Ireland. And, you know, I, I'd expect us to be getting full points in those games and pushing on and going up. Uh, going up a level then for, 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 for next year's competition and sorry does that uh, pardon my ignorance here is it the same as the men's where that guarantees us at least a playoff for the Euros if we do top the group I think so I'm not 100% sure because I know this is the first time they've introduced it as well so I'd need to read the nitty gritty myself but they did say they were basing it on the men so I would hope it does um, but I definitely need to look into that and in retrospect that's actually the best thing is to be in that because then you know you come off a winning series you top your group and then you go into the qualification group and by that stage you've improved your seeding so you get the benefit of actually having the wins and the confidence slash momentum and um, uh, you know uh, playoff exactly yeah so maybe it's not the worst thing things are looking good I think Sue good stuff thanks a million thanks guys take it easy Sue Ronan there former Republic of Ireland manager talking to us about the World Cup squad